Hmm. Chugging along, blasting off. Chugging along, blasting off. Oh, hey, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to continue with the Transformer Siege Wave 5. And I don't know if I should say that we're chugging along with wave, wave 5 or blasting off with Wave 5 because we're looking at this guy. It is Leader Class? Astro Train, and he's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Scott by True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, that's right, hit that notification bell, please, because it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel, at least for now. I have a lot of ideas, a lot of things I want to do, a lot of topics that we have to discuss, and hopefully I'll get the opportunity to do just that, and we'll keep kind of going in a positive direction going forward, guys. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, and L, The Autobot Family, and have a look for me everywhere across social media, because that's how we keep in touch. That's how our community grows. Uh, and this is the new Leader Class Astro Train, and he has come with a lot of controversy because he is absolutely tiny. Yes, he looks the part. He looks great, except for this battle damage. That's not good. Luckily, it's on flat panels, so it should be fairly easy to remove. But... Is this a good enough representation of this character? Well, we're going to see kind of how he scales with a, a number of other characters. Uh, some that he should scale quite well with. And we'll see if he's able to pull it off. Now, that being said, while a lot of people would say he is tiny for a leader class, there are others who have voiced the argument that, hey, he comes with a bevy of accessories, including blasters and this, like, backpack thing and, like, boot skis. But is the, all of that enough? Even speaking in terms of, like, grams of plastic use, is that enough mass to really warrant this guy being classified as a leader class? Well, we're going to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And Wave 5 rolls on for the Siege line when we look at the last of the leader class figures for that line, that being Astro Train. And I think that people wanted a leader class Astro Train, but I think that they expected something a little bit different. Some people have said, have a commander class Astro Train. I think that's too big, man. I don't, like, Astro Train, as big as he is, I don't think he's the same size as, uh, uh, like, Jetfire slash Skyfire, whatever you want to call him. I don't, I don't see him there. And if we were to get, say, a commander class Star Saber like a few people want... Don't think this guy's that big. So leader class, traditional leader class, was probably the right size. But that's not exactly what we got. Now, is it? Not quite, but is he guilty or innocent? Well, we're going to find out because there's like actually a lot of bits and pieces with this guy. But of course, we're going to begin with the packaging first. And as you probably expected, it's nice packaging. Over here, we have beautiful artwork of Astro Train. I love that artwork, actually. Uh, on this side, the usual Siege artwork. And on the back, of course, we have him in all of his modes. Train and shuttle and shuttle and base. And, of course, his actual robot mode. He also comes with this ginormous double-sided set of instructions. I swear, it feels more like a booklet than a set of instructions, but they're nice, big, bright, clear. I dig and them. I know that you know by now that this is my favorite panel. First of all, along the bottom of this panel, you can see how his one, two, three, four blasters and the other piece, whatever that is, go together to give you a gigantic cannon. Up top, my thumb is covering one of the items. It's one of his blasters. It's pretty strong with a great range. Not the most accurate thing in the world. Um, the blaster that I think, actually I think all four have different, it's weird, two of them are molded pretty much the same, uh, being this one down here and this one up here, but they have like different stats, that's strange. Uh, the top left corner here, or top right, this top corner, whatever, whatever you want to call that, depends on, on who's left or right we're talking about, that one up there is definitely the strongest, almost, almost as strong as direct hit and power punch. And 
Yeah, they're all there. I dig it. I can't read what any of them are because they're Cybertronian, but hey, it's cool. Speaking of those accessories, here's one piece, that weird piece. It's nicely molded. Not a lick of paint, as the old saying goes. Next, we have this blaster, and I would call this the main blaster. You will notice that I'm holding onto a peg, but we also have ports on either side. Ports for two blasters that look like this, and you'll notice I'm holding onto a port. There's a, or sorry, a uh, peg. There's a peg near the back that he can hold it in his hand or go on one of the many ports on his body. And of course, there is a peg on the side here. We will be able to use that to attach it to that main cannon that I just mentioned. And finally, we have this piece. You'll notice that I'm holding on to a peg. Again, he can hold it in his hand. On the back, there is a another like nub. This nub can go into the muzzle, basically of that main blaster cannon that I was talking about. And finally, when the whole thing is together, it looks like this, it's huge. I think it's supposed to be reminiscent of the blaster that the G1 version of this guy came with that was really bigger than he was. Uh, by the way, that last piece, it just tabs in on the bottom. There's a, a, a five millimeter peg and a port so you can put it there. Looks, looks impressive, I guess. Or you could take it all apart and do this. You can attach the whole lot of it to what is essentially his backpack or his, like, coal caboose thing. Uh, it rolls pretty great. Um, so, I mean, like, that's an option, I guess, if you want. Or you can take all of that off. Now, the way that this connects to train mode, um, really to all modes, is by this connection up here. This connection up here has like three pegs to it. It goes into the three thrusters um, that really are visible in all modes. So it's actually very tight when you put it on. This is how it is in a game like that train coal car mode. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this, man. Um, in terms of Opening it, I mean, you can open it, I guess, if you want, and split it open this way, and kind of open it all out like that, and fold that down. In essence, all of this now is like his landing pad for his shuttle. We'll see this in a, a little bit. These pieces move if that, I don't know if that helps you, if you like that. Now, I kind of sort of have it put back in the coal car. Uh, mode to sort of show you something else. You can still open this up and then these pieces here they pull off and they're on there pretty, this one at least, is on very securely and when they come off they're going to become foot pieces and kind of leave this just open. Pardon the little cutaway there but I was having trouble getting one of these feet off. It just They just slide off over these big rectangular pegs here. Once that's done you can pick this piece up and really what you're doing is, you're not even really picking it up. You're kind of picking it up and you're swerving it around and then you're pushing it down. Now you have these three connection points here. This is how this will connect to his back to make a backpack that's all open. I don't know. This is weird. I, I guess it's not as egregious and sticky-offy as it was on Shockwave, but... <sighs> Was there no better way to pull this off, honestly? Which at long last brings us to Astro Train himself. Whew, long way to get here. Uh, the backpack, I guess I'll put it on just to show it. You can see that we have three ports here. Um, I've already kind of shown it a few times, so this will come here and squeeze onto those three ports and he's going camping, I guess. Uh, in terms of his feet, he can gain a little bit of extra height. There's a port on the bottom of his foot, so you can put that snowshoe there and that snowshoe there. And he is like he is ready to make his way through like the mountains of Nepal. You know, like he is maybe he's a Sherpa. I don't know. He can't, like he could be. In terms of what we can do with like all of his other accessories, I don't know. Let's put a blaster here on that arm, say, and let's put another blaster over maybe 
there on that arm and while we're at it let's put one up here on on his shoulder can it go on his shoulder yeah we could put one on like his shoulder and face it forward and we put this one over on that shoulder and like face it forward and then this other thing I don't know let's just I'll just store that there on his wing. Like, you can do that if you want. You know, I, it's an option that you can do if you are so inclined. And he is bulky and hefty. But, if we take him back to just his base uh, robot mode, that's where an important issue with this guy comes into play. Is that issue his coloration? Nope, because his coloration is a solid 10. This is quintessentially Astro Train. It's perfect, except for, of course, the battle damage, which I'm not a fan of. Easy enough to remove. I haven't done it yet, but on both his feet and his shins, it's a smooth surface. It should not be hard to remove it. 10. Is it the transformation? No, not really, but we'll get to that. Is it the articulation? Again, no, not really. As a matter of fact, his articulation is quite good. We have a head that can go left and right and up and down. We have arms that can go out that far to the side. If you want to, like, un unattach or detach, I guess I should say, uh, this little purple tab here, you can. And, like, his arm technically then can go way up over his head. That being said, you can also just rotate the shoulder so that it goes up around. If you get the wing here out of the way, kind of, you should be able to get a bit of a better, further range. Like, I got a full rotation there at the shoulder. We do have a super duper deep elbow all the way up, double elbow. We have a bicep swivel. We have anything at the hand? No, we do not have a hinge at the hand, but it can, for transformation, I guess, angle down a bit. Uh, what else do we have? We have a waist, which is one thing that, say, the Titan's Return did not have, was a waist. Uh, he can do, uh, uh, I guess, a movement all the way up to the side for the splits. Uh, you can lift up his hip skirt, and the leg can go all the way forward. It can go kind of, sort of, back a little bit, but of course gets held up by all this junk. We have a thigh swivel, nice tight thigh swivel actually, and we have a knee to not quite 90 degrees, but I'm going to give it to him. It's like 88, 89 degrees, um, but I'm going to give it to him, I, which surprises me because I thought he was going to have even less with all this junk on his calf, and we do have an ankle tilt. So, excellent articulation. I mentioned the Titan's Return, and this is where the problem comes in. This is my custom Titan's Return Astro Train. Custom painted head, and I like this. The wing decos on both of these are different. The wing deco on the Siege one, we saw more often on the like actual show. The wing deco, with a little bit of custom work that I did on the top, does have more purple. That's from the movie. So both are accurate in their own way. Uh, but you can see the size difference. The Siege Astro Train is a leader class? Are you kidding me? I get it. He's a bit more dense in terms of his plastic, but the size looks wrong. It's, it just doesn't look right. The only real articulation advantages that the Siege one has over the Titan's Return is that he has a waist. Titan's Return does not have a waist. And... Uh, the Titan's Return has a 90 degree elbow instead of like a full double elbow. That's really the only advantages. Besides that, they're pretty darn comparable, man. Pretty darn comparable. If you want to know how he stacks up, well, here he is with Octane and um, Blitzwing. And like he's the smallest, like Octane was the smallest, but now Astro Train is the smallest. I feel like he should at least be comparable in size. Now, you can sort of, I'm not going to say fix it, but you can sort of mitigate his diminutive stature a little bit if you use the snowshoe pieces. Is that a perfect fix? Probably not, but at least it puts him more in line with Octane, if nothing else. And maybe I can buy Blitzwing being slightly bigger, but that being said, now you have him wearing those huge boot feet.
So where then do we stand when it comes to Siege Astro Train? Well, he has a 10 for his paint apps. The articulation, it'd be nice if he had wrists. Outside of that, it's pretty much perfect. So I'm going to say 9.5. He's scoring a 9.75. We have to do the conversion. And the arms are the trickiest part of the conversion. If you can get the arms sorted away, the rest of this guy is actually fairly easy, all things considered. And we're going to start with... Putting the fists in and do the same on the other side. There's a rectangular port, I guess, on his arm and a rectangular peg on the back of his shoulder. So we turn this around at the bicep and kind of bring the shoulder out and we bring this all the way up. You should be able to line the port up with the peg. It is a little bit of a nuisance to do. On this side, you're going to do the same thing. You rotate it around. You fold it all the way up. And then you should be able to bring the arms up over the head. You need to like unpeg this whole purple piece from down right. It's not even on peg. It's kind of in behind it, locks in behind it. So you need to kind of unlatch it really and then you bring these up over the head then we're going to be able to deal with the back just wanted to readjust slightly as we come here to this backpack and we pick it off it will come up then we take the i'll say the thruster section it's on a hinge and it will come up and over and tab on over his arms take these wings and straighten them out if you didn't already do so and that's like Half the shuttle done, really. We come down um, here on the body, and I have to remember now exactly how this is done. One moment here. Because there's little pieces here that flip out and down on the side. There. That's what it is. These pieces of his chest untab from the side and flip out, and then the whole chest flips up over his face with the tail fin coming up. And we can slot all of that together and lock those pieces in. The hip skirts come up over. They are going to probably be tight the first time you do it. And we can kind of untab the feet, sort of. And then this frightened me. You have to like pull this out and sort of combine or wars it up on the side. But it was really, really tight on mine the first time. It might be the same on yours. It's still pretty darn tight. But we bring that up behind this nose cone. We do the same on the other side. It's not fun to disengage it and get it up if I'm being real honest with myself. You can, I guess, begin to tab together the like nose cone section down here and angle that up over, angle that up over. And now you probably already guessed that all of this now tabs together to solidify everything with the feet folding down in underneath. I need to tap everything together, but in essence, boom, here he is in shuttle mode. And once I solidify him, uh, put him on his bay. No. And once I get those legs pegged together and solidified, I put him on his base, I put all of his like armored bits on him, and this is what we have. It's, it's a launch pad, I guess, I suppose. The shuttle itself is all right. I despise all of that battle damage look. I think it totally ruins the look of the shuttle. Now, to be fair, the shuttle almost seems a little bit unfinished anyway, but I can dig it for what it is. And if we just compare shuttle to shuttle, and by the way, you may have noticed that my Titans Return one is a little bit customized. I have some paint apps, and also, thanks to friend of the channel, Event Progenitor, I have a few of the Hasbro Asia stickers applied to this guy, which I do think helps the look. But 
Obviously, in terms of G1 accuracy, the Siege one takes it because the Titans Return one is kind of too flat. That being said, the Siege one isn't super perfect either. Not only because of the battle damage that could be removed but I feel like back here there's a lot going on I don't know like it almost feels like maybe there should be some sort of a panel piece or something covering this I don't know I don't know maybe it's just me but when I do see it I obviously think Astro Train this is pretty accurate for the most part that brings us to the last mode and I think that the last mode the train mode is what pulled a lot of people into getting this guy so, getting here, not that hard. Uh, you might notice a couple of things the first time you do it, but generally, not that hard. Okay, what about going to the train mode? Again, from here, not that hard. We're going to pick off those pieces and fold that in, and that whole thing will come down and we'll fold those up. We're going to bring that down and bring that down and snap those in. We're going to split the legs and I guess the toe. Well, we don't even need to split the toes actually. We're gonna split the legs and pull those out. We do not need to split the toes. All we really need to do is turn it around. So now there's gonna be a train front coming out here. We bring that back in and we bring that back in and we should be able to just tab those pieces back together and then we take the whole thing and turn it around. Fairly elegant so far and very familiar to the um, like original G1 version if I'm being perfectly honest. We can bring this down on the side and bring this down on the side and then these wing tips flip up underneath. They should go pretty much flush if you have the arms uh, like positioned correctly. Once we have this done, we can come here to this piece on the side and swing it around and it will come up and tab in. All of that along there. We'll do the same on the other side as well and flip it up. And tab it in. And really, in essence, boom, here is the train mode. Now, what about that coal car? Well, it, again, will attach back right there to look in totality like this. And is this an amazing train? Well, it's an Albright train. I mean, it's, it definitely feels more like almost steam locomotive-y than what we got with Titan's Return. But that being said, it's a completely different type of train. I mean, the one from Titan's Return seems like it's more like a, I don't know, commuter bullet train. And this one seems like a more old fashioned, like steam locomotive. <laughs> you know, t two trains, you know, one leaves Chicago at 6 a.m. The other leaves Denver at 8 a.m. You know, where are they gonna meet? There's a horrible, horrible math problem here. Just saying. But what about the final scores for this guy? Well, he was getting a 9.75. I think the transformation is fairly elegant, if I'm being honest. A couple of tabs can be slightly a bit of a nuisance, so I'm going to say that those tabs and the transformation on the whole is about a 9.5. Overall, this guy is about a 9.6. It's a great Astro Train. But is he guilty or innocent of the leader class price point, especially since that went up during the siege line? Well, traditionally, a leader class figure clocks in at a respectable 325 grams or so, roughly. And when I say a traditional leader, I'm talking about Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus, Power of the Primes Optimus Prime. Things of that nature. Power of the Primes, Rodimus Prime. They all clock in at about 325, 326, 328. And indeed, in the Siege line, Ultra Magnus clocked in at a respectable amount. But, and so did uh, Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime, actually. But Shockwave was significantly less. A traditional Voyager tends to run somewhere between 175 to 192 grams. So where does, does this guy fall in? 
With absolutely everything included, he is 294 grams. Let's even round it to 295. He is 20 grams less plastic, and you're paying, at least here in Canada, $10 more than you were. So I defer to the Quintesson judges. Yes, indeed, my most esteemed judges is Siege Astrotrain. Guilty or innocent of the Siege leader class price point. Guilty. So there you have it, he's guilty. Here in Canada, a regular retail price for this guy is, that's right, $69.99 plus tax. And in my neck of the woods, that's another 15%. Yeah, it's expensive. Now, does that mean he's not worth getting just because he's guilty? No, it doesn't. He's actually quite good, but he's worth getting just like I did when you can get them on sale. I got this guy on sale at a, really, a little bit less than what an old leader class price was. And I see the logic there. I got this guy for $55. The old price for a leader class was $59. You know what? 20 grams less plastic, I pay $5 less. Makes sense to me, man. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Really? Like, this is a leader? No, it's not. It's not a leader. It is not leader class in the least. If you just look at the two representations, Voyager, Leader, uh, the Leader is smaller? What? That makes no sense. Granted, it feels heftier and it probably does have just comparatively more mass. If you put the extra pieces on them, definitely more mass, but it still falls short for what traditionally we should have for a Leader class when we think about something like Combiner Wars Ultra Magnus or Power of the Primes Optimus Prime, those representations of those characters clock in at about 325 grams. This clocks in significantly less. I think that either everything here should have been engineered the way it was and upsized so that the additional plastic mass was included and it would probably scale, you know, about the same way this one scales, if not better. Or you should have cut out all that extra junk and just released this as a Voyager class. Um, I, I, anything would have been better than what they did. In, in terms of being just full regular retail, no, he's not worth it. He's not. If you're going to get him, get him on sale. And a lot of people have said that they're going to keep the older version or the Japanese iteration. I, I get the argument for doing that. I really do. I like this guy and he may very well be definitive. He is excellent. But in terms of scaling, he doesn't seem to fit in. He seems and feels out of place. At least he does to me. Let me know which one you prefer and which one you think scales better, is the better representation, all of that stuff. You know I love to hear from you guys. Uh, as always, thanks for dropping by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there is a donate link down in the description. Please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out so very much. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every day, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together, either in the live streams, at the stop motion premieres, or the old-fashioned way, man, right here, inside the videos.